Welcome to Magic Moonlog. I am your host, Dawn Marie Franzen, and this is a weekly series looking at the astrological forecast. So sit back and relax, and let's see what the moon and stars will bring us. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Magic Moon Log. So I just want to take a moment to discuss a little bit about these magic, this Magic Moon Log series, the weekly series, okay? How much of, of you guys are liking it? Are there some room for improvements? Well, there's always room for improvements, but, you know, is there something that you would like to see more of or something you would like to see less of? So the first few episodes that I did in this series was basically introducing the aspects and everything like that. Um, and if you have an astrological calendar at home, you can follow along with all the aspects that I'm talking about, all the events and everything like that. And plus, if you look to the back of the calendar, and that is where I get the information on the generalized advice that I give out towards the end of the episodes. All right. So if you feel a little confused, um, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. You can email me at dawnswitchmagic at gmail.com and I'll try to answer your questions as best as possible. And let me know what you think so far of the series. I do plan on probably changing things about a little bit, probably next season, but that's not going to happen for a while unless I get a lot of constructive criticism. And if I get a lot of uh, suggestions that I can appropriately do on the show and then, yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll talk about it. You know what I mean? So I would like to get your feedback on that. So good news. Um, I finally am going to start my new job on Monday. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you one thing. I have been out of work for a month and a half. It's been crazy. I've applied to a lot of jobs, different jobs. I'm looking, most of you know that I've been a teacher for the past 16 years, um, a preschool teacher, well, a childcare teacher, because only the last couple of years was I a preschool teacher. The rest of the time it was with toddlers or two-year-olds. Anyway, um, a child care teacher for the past 16 years. And I wanted a change. I needed a change. So I've been looking for jobs, basically looking for some type of office jobs. And I finally, you know, I've had a lot of interviews. I've applied to a lot of jobs. And I either they don't call back or... I have the interview and they decline me or they don't even get back to you at all or they say they're not going to go further with it. It's been really frustrating. There are a ton of jobs out there, but for some reason, they're not quick to hire. I mean, honestly, I think that they see that I've been a teacher for the past 16 years and that's probably all they see, but I can do so much more, you know, so... And I try to tell them at, that at the interviews, you know, that I have experience in other fields, just it's been a long time. And I know a lot of things have changed since then, you know, especially technology and all that kind of good stuff. But I mean, a lot of these places that I applied to were insistent on hiring people that need to be trained. Hello, that was me. You know what I mean? So it's been crazy. So... I finally am going to be starting a job on Monday, so I'm all excited about that. And I'm going to fix my screen so it doesn't shut off. And while I'm doing this, there's another thing that I wanted to kind of say too. Um, if you're watching these videos, you will notice, like I'm doing right now, that I tend to look down a lot. That's because I have my notes on my iPad. I don't remember everything. I write myself a script. I do my research and I know what I want to talk about, but I write myself a script. So number one, I can give you the accurate information. 
And number two, so that I don't forget key moments and I don't wanna mess up what I wanna tell you guys. So I do a lot of visuals on the YouTube video, you know what I mean? But sometimes if you see my face, you'll see me looking down, that's why. I try to download, they have these apps, teleprompter apps that go right to your phone and you can write your script on your phone and the words will go up on the thing and you're looking at the phone and it looks like you're looking right at the camera because you're looking at the words on the screen. But I don't know, to me, I don't know. This is more natural, I think. I don't know, I mean, I'm just, maybe down the road I can try to do that, but I mean, as long as you guys don't mind me looking at my notes every now and then, I know what I'm tell I'm talking to you guys about, but I have to look at my notes because I'm not memorizing it, all right? All right, so enough rambling on. Let's get on with our AstroCast for April 27 to May 3rd. At 3.59 a.m. Saturday, which is today if you're listening to this, the moon was trying with Mercury. And I'm saying was, because I noticed that when I released this on Saturday morning, I am starting the week for Saturday in the forecast. And sometimes things come before, things happen before this this podcast show gets released. So, um, yeah, because I usually release it at 7 a.m. on Saturday. So if things, if events happen before that, you know, I'll try to be more mindful in saying that did happen already. All right, so at 421, the moon and Saturn were square. The moon and Uranus quincunx at 318 p.m. Then the moon will quincunx with Jupiter at 530. On Sunday, the moon squares with Mars at 215 a.m. At 2.56, the moon and Venus trine. The moon is square with Neptune at 3.31 and is void, of course, until 5.37 when it moves into Capricorn. The moon and sun trine at 10.28 p.m. On Monday, Mars and Neptune are in conjunction at 12.31 a.m. At 7.31, Venus moves into Taurus. So it's in its home sign, so it's very comfortable there. So keywords for this time are slow and sensual and steady. So at 11.28, the moon sextiles Saturn. At 11.45, the moon and Mercury square. At 9.49 p.m., the moon trines with Uranus. At 12.39 a.m. on Tuesday, the moon trines with Jupiter. The moon and Neptune sextile at 9.25. Then the moon sextiles Mars at 11.19 and is void, of course, until 11.20 when it moves into Aquarius. Mars moves into Aries at 11.33. So again, Mars in Aries, Mars is in its home sign of Aries, which value, they value direct communication and taking the lead. So they are also action oriented. And the keywords are ardent and assertive. So at 2.04 p.m., the moon squares Venus. At three o'clock, the moon is in conjunction with Pluto. On Wednesday, May 1, happy Beltane, also known as May Day. So Beltane is a spring festival of goddess fertility. Back in the day, people would light bonfires the night before and then erect the maypole representing the god on Beltane. Today, we put up maypoles and we hang ribbons from them and everyone goes around the pole walking, dancing, skipping while winding the ribbons around the pole. So here are some correspondences that are related to Beltane. Animals include ducks, cats, and swans. Colors are green, blue, yellow, red, and brown. Deities associated with Beltane are Aphrodite, Artemis, Diana, Pan, and Venus. Flowers and herbs include ash, cinquefoil, clover, foxglove, honeysuckle, marigold, mugwort, and thyme. 
Foods are dairy, grains, and green salads. Crystals used include emerald, amber, malachite, sapphire, and rose quartz. Incense includes frankincense, lilac, and ro rose. Tools are broom, cauldron, and maypole. All right, moving on. So at 12.30 a.m., Venus squares with Pluto. At 7.27, the moon moves into the fourth quarter phase and is square with the sun. The moon sextiles Mercury at 5.48 p.m. On Thursday, May 2nd, the moon squares with Uranus at 2.06 a.m. At 5.28, the moon squares with Jupiter and is void, of course, until 2.52 p.m. when it enters Pisces. Meanwhile, Pluto goes retrograde at 1.46 p.m. Did I say retrograde? Retrograde. <laughs> Remember that retrograde means that the planet appears to be moving backwards. And Pluto stays retrograde for about six to seven months at a time every year, once a year. All right, and then the moon sextiles with Venus at 10.21 p.m. At 5.06 a.m. Friday, Mars and Pluto sextile. At 1.55 p.m., the moon and sun sextile. At 7.05, the moon and Saturn are in conjunction. So, what does it all mean? So this weekend may, may be a time to reach discussions. You might feel more disciplined in your work. You may have questions concerning philosophical outlooks. You could be impulsive, make beautiful purchases, be gullible, and be at ease with the opposite sex. The beginning of the week may bring about distractions. You may find it easy to help someone in need. Origina origin uh, can I say the word? Original <laughs> originality, wow, okay. Creativity and nervousness may come into place. Relax with friends and enjoy involvement with others. In the midweek, celebrate Beltane and light your bonfire, dance around the maypole, beat on those drums, and maybe join in a festival. They are a lot of fun. I actually haven't been to one in a while, but oh my goodness, it was so much fun. I gotta look to see if there's one going on around here. Anyway, um, be careful of judging others too harshly and don't force matters. You might need to do some quick thinking. So towards the end of the week, you should be able to tackle any problems. There may be broken promises. You could feel extra affectionate. You might gain through more work and might experience dependability. All right, and with that- Magic Moonlog is sponsored by Life Changing Energy. They've got yoga outfits, and all kinds of other clothing, jewelry, and healing tools. Take an online course. I took my course with Vicki Gold and am now a certified crystal and chakra healer. Please visit lifechangingenergy.com and use the promo code MAGIC7, that's magic with a K, number seven, for 7% 7 off your purchase. And now back to the show. And with that, let's go on to the spell of the week from the Witches Spell of Day Almanac. And I was smart and I bookmarked my page that I wanted to do. And look, it's a Harry Potter bookmark. It's Hermione, my girl. I resonate so much with Hermione. Anyway, um, this one is going to be a garland of marigolds. And it's for May 1st, which is also Beltane. The color of the day is yellow and the incense of the day is lilac. Making floral wreaths of spring flowers is as old as spring itself. The flowers you choose can influence the magic you are creating. Marigolds are associated with prophecy and psychic ability. Weaving and wearing a garland filled with marigolds will bring insight through dreams of what might blossom for you in the spring and early summer. Wear the garland all day or as long as possible and put it under your pillow overnight. You will need green floral, floral wire. I don't know why I can't say words today. Fresh marigolds, 
usually sold in packs of four or six or picked from your garden, some thin ribbon and a selection of lavender, roses, and green vines, which are optional. And I just realized that I forgot to post this on the page on Tuesday. So as soon as I'm done recording here, I will post that. All right, make a circle of the floral wire big enough for your head and decorate it with the marigolds. You can also add ribbons, foliage, and anything else that strikes your fancy. And that would be a great thing to wear during a Beltane festival. And that was by Phoenix Le Fay and Guion Raven. Well, I, I said it could be weren't at the festival that wasn't in the book. All right, so oh, I gotta reach, stretch the Everyday Spells card. This is a stress release. You'll need blue paper, blue pen, two drops of lavender oil, one chamomile tea, one glass bottle, and two pinches of sea salt. On the paper, write a word that represents peace and relaxation. Brew a cup of chamomile tea, let it cool, and then transfer it to the glass bottle. Add the lavender oil and sea salt. Place the paper on a windowsill where it will catch the moonlight and place the glass bottle on top. Leave it overnight, allowing your chosen word to infuse into the tea. The next day you can add your potion to a hot bath and relax. That sounds amazing. I think we could all use that, right? And it's pretty simple. All right, so now for the Oracle cards. And here's one that I haven't read from in a while. The Moonology deck. All right, so let's see what the moon has in store for us. Oh, I love the inside of this box. It says, let the moon be your guide. Isn't that cool? Okay. Get the book. All right. And here I go with the shuffle. These cards are a little easier to shuffle for some reason. I don't know. I mean, all the Oracle cards, they're pretty much the same size and everything, but I don't know, maybe these ones are a little more slippery. I don't know. And as I'm saying this, I get stuck. And with playing cards, for instance, oh, okay. Before I continue, some cards just jumped out, so I'm gonna read those. Um, I was gonna say, with playing cards, I was playing Uno with my grandkids the other day, and when I was shuffling the cards, I do the shuffle with the hands like that, but then I also do the bridge, you know what I mean? So, and I don't like to do that with my Oracle cards though, because I really don't wanna bend them. So three cards jumped out of the deck. So I'm gonna read all three because they could be important. And um, so let's see, the first one is emotions are running high. I'll read the first one first. Emotions are running high and it's in the super moon. So these are, the book is um, categorized by different types of moons. So super moon, let's see. Moon phase cards, okay. Page 110. I think it's one of the last ones. No. All right, emotions are running high. This card suggests that the answer to whatever you're asking is writ large like the silvery full moon set against the velvety night sky. If you're wondering how successful something is going to be, such as a, such as a job or relationship, the answer is very. This is perfect for me because I'm starting my job on Monday. Isn't this perfect? Oh, I hope this means that, you know, I'm gonna be successful at my new job. Okay. Um, to use common parlance, the answer to your question may well be that it is under your nose. This card is about being larger than life, being special and bursting with energy that you can tune into and work with. You can expect, expect plenty of good things and a positive outcome when this card comes up, but you may find there's a lot of emotion to deal with too. There's also a sense that the opportunities around whatever you're asking about don't come along every day, so take action. And the, it's, there's an attune to the moon that says, success is close, I just must trust. 
So that's kind of like an affirmation, right? And additional meanings for this card, a resolution to your question is closer than you may think. Don't ignore the obvious. Something exciting lies ahead. Make sure you don't blow events out of proportion. Speak to the goddess. Ask for her assistance. And the teaching is, a supermoon is a new or full moon that takes place when the moon is at its closest point to the earth during its monthly orbit, an event known as perigee. If it's a full moon, the moon appears around 14% bigger at this time. The moon is known as the queen of emotions. And if you draw the supermoon card, regardless of when you do this, you can expect your feelings to be more highly charged. All right, awesome. I like that one. Okay, this next one is be bold and make the first move. So let's see what this one's about. It is under the cardinal moon. And that's funny too, because I'm a cardinal sign. And we're in the cardinal sign of Aries. Uh, let's see. Mm, cardinal moon 104 wasn't that far away from the other one. All right. Be bold and make the first move. Now is the time to be bold, bossy even. Take matters into your own hands. Cardinal signs are powerful and self-starting. They're determined and great at organizing. Drawing this card strongly suggests that you're going to need to be all those things to get your ideal resolution or position in the situation you're asking about. This card may challenge you on how strongly you really want something. If you're worrying about a situation, it is a suggestion to be less passive. Instead, take an assertive stance as you steer events where you want them to go. Speak up for what you want. If you're serious about sorting things out, you may need to take the lead in some way to step up as a leader. In the Attune to the Moon, the affirmation, I am taking charge of my destiny. Ooh, these cards are great. Additional meanings, be bold and follow your heart and your emotions. Avoid recklessness or moving too fast. Come into your power. The time for action is now. Ask Anisha, the Hindu elephant god, for help. And the teaching says, in astrology, there are three quadru quadruplicities. There are three quadruplicities, cardinal, fixed, and mutable. The cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Remember, we each all have 12 signs in our chart for different parts of our lives. It's just the way the astrological wheel works. These are the signs that like to get things started and which are the natural leaders. No matter when you draw this card, it's a sign that something new is starting and you quite possibly need to take the lead on it. Wow, holy cow. Are these cards talking to me or what? I hope they're talking to you too. All right, so this next one, a time to give rather than take. And this is new moon in Virgo. So it's a different section. New moon in Virgo. All right, a time to give rather than take. When this card comes up, it's time for you to take stock of your situation. Where are you and where do you wanna go? The new moon energy of this card suggests a restart and the Virgo energy suggests you make that restart a clever one that's simple and well-organized. Virgo also has a strong health aspect to it. So if you've been unwell, this card suggests that your health is on the up. Virgo loves clean eating and alternative therapies. So add these into your routines now, however you've been feeling. If a situation is blocked at the moment, it could be that you're overanalyzing things or being too critical. It's time to ask less what someone else can do for you and to think more about what you can do for others. Oh my goodness, okay. A tune with the moon. Recommit to healthy morning and evening routines. Got it. Additional meanings. Gradual improvements are coming. My finances maybe. <laughs> Pay attention to detail if you want success without being pedantic. Be of service to others and love and money will follow. This person you're asking about is reliable. And the teaching says, Virgo is the sign of health, service, and analysis. Its energy is precise and has a feel of the harvest about it. When this card comes up, 
It could be that a wonderful bounty is coming your way. However, the energy of the new moon in Virgo is usually about getting your life in order. So that's what you need to do at the time of the Virgo new moon and whenever else you pull this card. Wow, okay. I have to say, those three cards that I pulled is really good advice for me. And I feel that since I talked about getting this new job at the beginning of this episode, that these cards and these three cards that I that just jumped out as I was shuffling, I mean, it all has the same kind of meaning. Do you know what I mean? New start, you know, take on the lead. Um, things are going to get better. You know what I mean? So and I really hope that these cards resonate with you as well, because really I pull these Oracle cards as a, for a general reading. I do myself my own personal readings, um, but ask questions about what I'm wanting to know the answers about and which I think I'm going to go more in depth into, um, my new job and asking questions about that. How's it going to go and everything like that. But these cards that I pulled, oh my goodness, very, very positive. Okay. So I hope that you guys have a great Beltane, whatever it is that you do to observe it. And if you're not sure about Beltane, if you don't really know too much about it, I have done an episode on it in the past. I'm not sure exactly what episode it was. I believe it was the first or second season in, um, but I have mentioned it on occasion before. So every time it comes up every year, I, ooh, I always do kind of mention it, but if you want to know in more detail about it, you can go listen to that episode and I will put the link on the show notes in the description. Um, and I'll try to remember to put it on the Facebook page as well, just so you guys have it. Um, and don't forget, I have my episode guide up on my website too. So you can always check that out and that'll help you to find things quickly as well. All right, everyone. So happy Beltane to you and have a very magical week. If you like this episode or show, please consider going over to Apple or Spotify to give me a rating and review. It will really help with the algorithm of the show. Share with your friends and follow me at Witch Magic on Instagram. You can also join us on the Witch Magic Facebook group. If you would like to support the show even more, you could check out my Patreon and Coffee pages and join the tier of your choosing and budget for extra perks as well as helping me maybe get a cup of tea. Thanks, everyone.